Oh, hello, readers. I'm Ba Chen. I'm Nimikong. I'm Ban Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Club. 12th sector of Jane Eyre, an autobiography. S. L. Jane Eyre, an autobiography. Shella Brunt. Tap. 12th sector 2. Or Shender the Hedge. Darva. Whose black and white club made him a distinct object against the trees? A huge edge. It passed me. However, quietly enough, to look up with strange pretty eyes in my face. Half expected it would. The horse followed a tall steed. A rider. The man's. The human being. Broke the spell at once. Nothing ever rode the gitrash. It was always alone. And goblins. To my notions. Though they might tenant the dumb carcasses of beasts. Scarce of a shelter in the commonplace human form. Taking the short cut to coat. He passed. And I went on. A few steps. And I turned. What the juice is to do now and a clattering tumble. Rested my attention. Man and horse were done. Which glazed the causeway. The dog came bounding back. In a predicament, and hearing the horse groan, echoed the sound, which was deep in proportion to his magnitude, round the Bross Street group, and then he ran up to me. All he could do there was no other help but hand to summon, dead, and walked down to the traveller, off his steed. His efforts were so vigorous. They much hurt. But I asked him the question. Are you injured? Think he was swearing. But I'm not certain. However, some from mutilage prevented him from replying to me directly. Asked again. You must just stand on one side, he answered as he rose. First to his knees, and then to his feet. I did. Began a heaving, stamping, clattering process, which removed me effectually some yard distance. Away till I saw the event. This was finally fortunate. We established. And the dog was silenced with the down. Pilot, the traveller now, stooping, felt his foot then let go. Thund. Apparently something at them. Head just risen. And sat down. I was in the mood for being useful. Or at least officious. I think. In. If you are hurt and want help, so thank you. I shall do. I've been tried his foot. Something of delight still lingered. Was waxing bright. I could see he plainly. A riding cloak, fur coloured and still clasped. Its details were not apparent, but I traced the general points of middle height and considerable breadth of chest. He had a dark face, with stern features and a heavy brow. His eyes and 
that eyebrows look direful and thwarted just now. Eighth. But had not reached middle age. Perhaps he might be thirty-five. Felt no fear of him. And but little shyness. And song. Heroic looking young gentleman. Him against his world. And offering my services unasked. Seen a handsome youth. Never in my life spoken to one. A theoretical reverence and homage for beauty. Elegance. Andre. Fascination. Had I met those qualities incarnate in masculine shape. That they neither had nor could have sympathy with anything in me. How shunned them as one would fire. Lining. Ripe but antipathetic. I addressed him. With thanks. To renew inquiries. What the friend. The roughness of the traveller. Me at my ease. Oh. And announced. I cannot think of leaving you. So. Late an hour. In this solitary lane. Said this. He had hardly turned his eyes in my direction before. Think you ought to be at home yourself, said he. Home in this neighborhood. From just below. Afraid of being out late when it is moonlight. Hey for you with pleasure. If you wish it. Indeed. Just below do you mean at that house with the battlements? Pointing to the unfilled hall. On which the men cast a hoary gleam. From the woods that. By contrast with the western sky. Massive shadow. Yes. We'll see. Do you know, mister? Well. Is not resident. You are not a servant at the hall. Of course. You are usurped. And his eye over my dress. We do. As usual. It was quite simple. A black merino cloak. Bonnet. Neither of them have fine enough for a lady's maid. To decide what I was. I helped him. Ah. The governess. He repeated. Just take me. If I had not forgotten. My raiment underwent scrutiny. In two minutes he rose from the style. Face expressed pain when he tried to move. He said. But you can help me a little yourself. Yes. To get hold of my horse's bridle and lead him to me. Have been afraid to touch a horse when alone. Eh. I was supposed to obey. Still. And went up to the tall steed. Bridal. But it was a spirited thing. Near its head. Made effort and effort. Though in vain. Meantime. I was mortally afraid of its trampling for feet. For some time. And at last he laughed. I see, he said. Mountain will never be brought to Mahomet. I had Mahomet to go to the mountain. I came. Excuse me, he continued. Shoulder. And leaning on me with some stress. Limp to his horse. Having once got the bridle, he mastered it directly and sprang to his saddle, grimacing grimly as he made the effort, for it wrenched his brain. Said he, 
releasing his underlip for a hard bite. My whipped. I sought it and found it. Thank you. With the letter to A. First stop from here. And then bound away. Traces. All three vanished. By Keith at. In the wilderness. My muff and walked on. The incident had occurred and was gone for me. It was an incident of no moment. No romance. A sense. Yet it marked with change one single hour of a monotonous life. My help had been needed and claimed. I had given it. Was pleased to have done something. Trivial. Transitory though the deed was. It was yet an active thing. Asaf. The new face. Do. The gallery of memory. And it was dissimilar to all the others hanging there. Thirsty. Because it was masculine. And uh, Secondly. Bark. Storm. And stern. Entity. And slapped the letter into the post office. I walked fast down hill all the way home. When I came to the stile, I stopped a minute. Looked round in the sand. Our horses' hoofs might ring on the causeway again. I cooked. And a good trash like Newfoundland dog. Might be again apparent. So only the hedge and a pollard will over for me. Straight to meet the moonbeams. Fitful among the trees round foreign fields. A mile distant. Down in the direction of the murmur. My eye. Traversing the hall front. Quad like kindling in a window. It reminded me that I was late. And I hurried on. I did not like re entering foreign fields. Threshold was to return to stagnation. To cross the silent hall. The darksome staircase. To seek my own lonely little room. Me tranquil my spare facts and spend the long winter evening with. Her and her only slip again over my faculties the views fitters of. And uniform into still existence. Of appreciating. Wind tossed in the storms of. An uncertain struggling life ripened. Yes, the sitting in a cheesy chair to take a long walk just as natural as the wish. To stir under my circumstances would be under his. I lingered. At the gates I lingered on the lawn. I paced backwards and forwards on the pavement door were closed. I could not see into. The interior says from taint of cloud, the moon ascending it. In solemn march, seeming to look up as she left the hilltops calm. Far and far below her and aspired to the zenith. Dark in its fifth in this depth and measureless distance followed her course they. Made my heart tremble, viewed them. Little things recall us to earth. All that sufficed, I turned for moon and stars. Opened the side door and went in. The hall was not dark. Nor yet was it lit. Only by the high hung barn's lamp, the lower steps of the oak staircase. Dining room, whose two leaf door stood open. Great glancing on marble hearth and brass fire irons, polished furniture. In the most pleasant radiance, it revealed two group. Near the mantelpiece, I had scarcely caught it of a cheerful mingling. Of voices of adult when the door closed. I hastened to. My Fairfax's room, there was fire there too, but no Kindle and no Mice Fairfax. Instead, all alone, seeing upright on the rug with gravity at the blaze. I beheld a great black and white long haired dog, just like the Katresh. 
of the lane. Soft me. I caressed him and he. Why it is great tail, he looked an eerie creature to be alone with. Once he had come, I rang the bell for I wanted. A candle. And I wanted too to get an account. Of this visitant. Leonard. With Mustero. Indeed. As. Is my sis at the they are in the dining room. And John is gone for a surgeon. For Master has had an accident. Is coming down her law. They brought it. She entered, followed by my sphere facts, the news. Adding that Mr. Carter the surgeon was come now with Mr. Rochester, then she hurried out to give orders about tea. To be continued.